Okay, so sorry. So yes, we were doing this. So today we'll cover this. Now we were we do this MPC, right? So what is MPC, ma'am? Basically, like uh, whatever you are consuming, when you will divide it by your this income, change in consumption divided by change in income is your MPC, right? So now few points about MPC is first value of MPC varies between zero to one. Okay, so you have to remember that your MPC will always lie between zero to one. It can be zero point one, it can be zero point eight, or zero or one. Not more than one. What for APC? What was it? It was basically it can be one, it can be more than one, and it can be less than one. Right? If you remember APC. Right, three situations were there when APC is more than one, when APC is equals to one, and when APC is less than one. Okay, but for MPC, you will only say between zero to one. Okay, so the value of MPC varies between zero to one, as we know that the increase in income is either spent on consumption or saved for the future. For example, listen to it very carefully, students. For example, you are earning ten rupees. Okay, now you are you started earning twenty rupees. So earlier you were consuming. Eight rupees. Okay, so now what you can do? You have three situations. This is your income, this is your consumption, and this is your saving. So what you can do? You were saving two rupees, right? But now there is an addition in your income, right? So either you can continue with the same consumption and the whatever extra amount, twelve uh, rupees you are earning extra, you can save the entire thing, right? Or you can use your entire income. For example, you have two situations for twenty. You either can con consume same thing, but use the entire extra income for your savings or you can you know add over here you can increase it and you can keep the savings same right so either you can use your entire money on consumption or on savings right yes or no no yes got the point no can you repeat again yeah okay for example uh, you were earning 10 rupees okay and 10 rupees you were consuming 8 rupees and 2 rupees you were saving okay but now your income increased to 20 right so how much extra you are getting you are getting the extra 10 rupees okay so what you can do you can use this extra 10 rupees for the consumption for uh, example you uh, spend it 8 plus 10 you can do this or you can do 2 plus 10 like this Okay, so either you can use your extra income on consumption, the entire income you can spend on consumption, or you can use the extra income for the saving. So you can either choose this or this. Right now, you got the point. Yes, teacher. Right. So the extra money which you are getting, you can either use it for consumption. Like I got ten rupees extra, and I used, I ate chocolates for that. I didn't save any amount. Or I can do like instead of consuming. Extra, I said no. This extra money, I'll be keeping in my bank and I'll be saving it. So this is what you can do. You can use it for in consumption or for the savings, right? So it is now. Now uh, this is what. So as we know, the increase in income is either spent on consumption, either you will be using it for consumption or you will be saving it for future. So if you if entire income is spent, like if you are going to spend uh, your additional income, then see, uh, is. Spent just right here on consumption. Okay, so if you are spending your entire income on consumption, that means change in consumption is equal to change in income. At that moment, your MPC will be one. Remember this. Okay, if you are spending your entire in income on consumption, then your MPC is going to be one. If you are going to spend your entire income on saving, right? That means you are not consuming anything. So at that moment, your APC will be zero. Clear? If you are going, you have two option. Either you can use the additional income for consumption or for saving. So if you use your additional uh, consumption for uh, as additional income for consumption, then your MPC will be one. But if you are going to use that additional income for savings, then your MPC will be zero. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Aditya, no. Yes, teacher. Yeah. Okay. now mpc with the uh, mpc with the successive increase in income it happens mpc what happens it falls with excessive wherever your increase will income will be increasing your mpc will be falling okay because you already know with the in, increase in income like this right so it happens because as the economy economy becomes richer it has a tendency to consume smaller percentage of each increment to its income because see for example you have 100 rupees 
of course with the increase in income your consumption will be increasing but of course you are not going to eat uh, for example earlier you were eating six chapatis but because your income increase you won't be eating 10 chapatis right because your stomach has the limited space right so that's why mpc the additional the you know the willingness to eat additional falls with increase in income we are i'm not talking about consumption that your consumption will fall with increase in income no i'm talking about mpc the additional consumption like for example you have only 10 rupees but at that moment you want to eat this that that we have some wishes right but if you got 100 rupees somewhere you will be like okay you know sometimes when we have much of or you can say excess of anything we don't feel like eating or we don't feel like you know using that thing okay so at that moment mpc falls with successive increase in income it happens because as an economy become richer it has a tendency to consume smaller percentage of each increment to its income clear yes no yes teacher so you will just write it down this i hope you this triangles are clear to you people triangle right triangle is basically yeah, change yeah, yes change so change in done. so you will write it down important point of it Ma'am, please can you scroll it down?
Denmark. Okay, Aditya, you are also done? Yes, teacher. Okay. Now, we are going to do the difference between APC and NPC. We have already covered both the things. So, difference between APC and NPC. So, ma'am, what is APC and what is NPC? So, it is a ratio of total consumption expenditure during the uh, uh, expenditure toward the total income at a point of time. It is the ratio of change in consumption expenditure to the change in income over a period of time. Formula for APC and formula for MPC. Then APC is represented at a point of uh, at a point on the consumption curve. Okay, MPC is represented at the point on consumption curve with respect to previous point. You already know when we have to find MPC, what we do? We need the previous point, right? For example, you have to find delta C. So you need the two points, both previous and the present one, right? But APC, you don't need present. You only need the present one. Both you have to just divide it and get the answer. But for MPC, you need the previous one exact uh, because you need to find the change. So how can you find the change? Only you have when you have the previous record. Then APC equals to 1 at a break-even point when C is equals to 1. APC is greater than 1 when C is, uh, you know, greater than income. Then MPC can never be equals to, uh, sorry, can never be equals to 1 as MPC lies between 0 to 1. So it can be less than, it can be greater than 1 or less than one but not one okay and mpc cannot be more than one as change in consumption cannot be more than change in income clear okay you can quickly write it down
Done, ma. Done, ma. So I'm giving you five minutes. What you people are going to do in this five minutes? First of all, uh, from start, because to, I will be starting with the uh, saving, like the intro part. So what you are going to revise? First, you are going to revise this. Uh, propensity to consume, right? And then types of propensity to consume. Okay? We did na APC and MPC, right? Yes, ma'am. These three things. Quickly revise it. I'm giving you five minutes because after that, I'll be starting with the propensity to save. So when you can relate, you can relate it. Like consumption, we were doing that. Savings, we were doing this. Okay? Okay, wait. Okay, I didn't share my screen. I'm asking you people to revise. So sorry. So, yeah, savings, uh, we can relate it. So, that's why I'm just giving you five minutes. Quickly, just read it and go through the graph, like how it looks like it's going upward, going downwards, whatever it is. Okay? Good evening, Amos. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you were late. What happened? You forgot? Good evening, ma'am. Ma'am, I was not feeling well. Okay, okay. You are fine now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, I'll just give you a brief. If you want to take the screenshot, you can. Okay? I'll just give you a brief thing, what we did. Because they uh, others two are revising. Other than Jainab are revising. The previous one. And after that, I'll start with the new concept. Okay, so you can take a screenshot or if you want to write till they are revising, you can. Okay, if you are not feeling well, you can take the screenshot. Whenever you feel well, you can write it down. Okay? Okay, ma'am. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. 
So basically, we did like in the previous class, we did we were doing MPC, right? So we are like today I discussed few points like about MPC. So, ma'am, first of all, uh, what are the few points about MPC? First is that MPC lies between zero to one. Okay. So for MPC is basically like when your additional income is being increased. For example, you were earning ten rupees, but now your income increased to twenty. So earlier you were consuming eight and you were saving two, consumption, saving, and your income. But when your income increased by 10, 10 rupees, you are getting extra. So what you can do, you can do it like this, 8 plus 10. Okay, or you can do it like 8, 2 plus 10. You, you have the choice whether you can, the additional income which you got, the additional 10 rupees, you can use that entire income for the consumption or you can use that entire income for the savings. Okay, so that's why your MPC lies between 0 to 1. So when you are going to spend your entire income on consumption, okay, then your MPC is going to be equals to 1, okay? But when you are going to spend your entire additional income on saving, then your MPC is going to be 0. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And next, MPC falls with a successive increase in income. It happens because as an economy becomes richer, it has tendency to consume smaller. So, see, uh, as you know, with increase in income, your consumption also increase. Right. But here I'm talking about additional. So, for example, you know, when we have excess of anything, we don't uh, we don't want to eat more. Right. So it is like MPC fall with excessive increase in income. So when there is an, a successive increase in income, your MPC falls. OK, but here I'm not talking about consumption. I'm talking about additional consumption. So we what we do is basically we, it goes on falling with increase in this. OK, clear. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then we did the difference between APC and MPC. So what is APC? It is the it is the ratio of total consumption expenditure to total income at a point of time. And it is the ratio of change in consumption expenditure to the change in income over a period of time. This is remember one thing, uh Janam and Aditya, this is point of time. Okay, this is period of time. Why I hope you people remember when we are talking about change. So that means from this to this. Okay, then your MPC, this is the formula, this, and this is represented with the help of consumption curve, but this is represented with the help of previous consumption, right? We need the previous one, then only you can find what is the change. Here, MPC is one, when it is less, just read it. Okay? Okay, ma'am. Then, ma'am. Must you have taken the screenshot of this? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and this one? Wait, I'll just erase the rest of the things. Now that would be easy for you. Okay, you can take the screenshot now. Done? Okay, yeah, done, ma'am. Uh, Aditya, done? A revision. Okay.
okay aditi you can uh, rejoin i'm just i'll just wait for you okay Okay, other time I audible now. Okay. Okay, students. So now let's just start. Okay. So now we are we uh, what we were doing previously, we were doing propensity to consume. Now we will be doing propensity to save. Okay, which is also known as saving function. So, ma'am, what is this? Saving function refers to functional relationship between saving and national income. Okay, there we were dealing uh, the relationship between consumption and income, right? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Janab and Aditya, you revise now. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Janab. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So there we were dealing with consumption, which was like uh, the functional uh, functional group was income. Here we will be doing the relationship between savings and the national income. Okay. So basically this is S equals to F and in bracket income where S is savings, Y is national income and F is functional relationship. So first of all, you will write it down and then we'll do few points about saving function. Okay, ma'am.
Done, ma'am. Done, ma'am. Done, ma'am. Okay. Now, next thing is that we are going to do few points about saving curve. Okay. So first is the starting point of saving curve. Okay. Uh, starts from the p x axis, indicating that there is a there are negative savings. So you already know that there are negative savings, right? When your income is zero or when your income is low, at that moment there are negative savings, right? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Next, the slope of saving curve has a positive slope, which indicate a positive relationship between saving and income. So you you know your saving curve goes like this. I'll just share the picture as well. Uh, it goes like this. So that means this is a positive slope. And there is a positive relationship between your income and your savings. As your income increases, your saving also increases. Right? Next, break-even point. Saving curve crops x-axis at point E. This is a break-even point at which savings are zero. So when your consumption is equal to your income, at that moment what happens? Your savings are zero. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Right. So at the moment, your savings are zero and positive savings. After the break even point, savings become positive And now your income, because your income is increasing, you can save more. Clear? Yes, yes sir. I'm clear. Okay. So these are the points. You can, uh, uh, you have drawn the graph as well for this, but I'll just explain you the graph in the next class. But for right now, you're just going to write it or you can relate it. You have drawn the graph already. You have drawn it. If you remember, right? You can use that as well. You remember where we did the break even point, point like this the consumption and the savings, and the point where they were meeting that point E point was known as break even point. Yes. I think we draw it for the consumption one. There we draw savings as well. No, we do that savings curve as well. Yes, no? ma'am. I remember. Yeah, others. I'll just show you just now. This one. You remember this one? Right? So basically, this was your consumption curve, but the other which you draw from drew from the downwards. From here itself, you started, right? So that is your saving curve. S. Yes? No? Yes. You remember? Okay. Yes, teacher. Just write down the points. Don't worry. I'll just explain this thing again.
ಇದನ್ನ 